In this video, we're going to have a look at the TK Inter Entry Widget. The Entry Widget is used to enter text strings. It'll allow the user to enter one line of text. The Text Entry Widget can be placed on a graphical user interface. The Entry Widget is used to enter text strings. This widget allows the user to enter one line of text. If we consider the following specification, we're going to use it to demonstrate how you can use an entry widget with a graphical user interface. Produce a graphical user interface that allows a user to enter their name and have the program respond by displaying hello followed by the name they enter. So for example if the user were to enter Fred Smith the graphical user interface would respond by saying hello Fred Smith. Of course, whenever you're producing a graphical user interface, you need to sketch your ideas out first. And I usually do this with a pencil and a piece of paper. Here in the video, I'm going to do it schematically. So I know I will need a window. And onto this window for this specification, I'm going to place a label widget, an entry widget, a button widget, and another label widget. Now, the way I'm going to use these are as follows. I'm going to place in the label widget, please enter your name. Now, this is a user-friendly string, so the user can see what they're supposed to do and where they're going to enter their name is in this entry widget here and then I'm going to require a button and the text of the button is simply click me to enter name working with this here we can see that when it is built what the user is going to do they're going to enter their name into here and I'm entering my name Philip Jones the next thing to happen is they'll click on this button and it's for me as the programmer to think, well, what will happen when they click on this button? Well, we want some code to execute. Now I need to think about what will go into this code. And I show the fact that code is executing by this dotted line here. And I need to think what the algorithm will be inside here, what the steps will be. And the steps are as follows. Get text from entry widget. So in other words, we're going to get this here, Philip Jones. And on this line, it's saying form the string. And that means that I'm going to concatenate the string hello with Philip Jones that was brought in from the entry widget. And then we're going to display the string formed in a label. In other words, hello Philip Jones, the concatenation of the two strings is going to be placed into the label as shown here. Now that's what I want the program to do when it executes. Let's first of all consider this code which shows how we could draw the graphical user interface. I've attached no code to this, so it's not the complete solution. I'll do that on the next slide. And we know what these three lines of code should do from the previous videos. If we come here, we can see we're producing three widgets. The first widget, which I've called label underscore one, is going to be a label. And this label is going to have a text option set to please enter your name. This is how we create the entry widget. And I've called it entry underscore one, and that's going to be equal to entry. And you can see that I'm passing my window in. And of course, we should know that from previous videos. This is going to associate this widget with the window that was created on this line. And then we come here to the creation of a button widget, which again, we've seen in previous videos. And this is going to display this text click me to enter name now these are all being created these three widgets on these three lines but they do not have a visual presence until you execute these lines and of course this one here is going to display label one within the window and it's going to be putting it in this position here row zero column zero this is going to be responsible for placing the entry widget onto the window at row zero column one and this is going to be responsible for placing the button onto row one column zero now you will note that i sketched out four widgets there is a label widget missing from here but i'll come on to why i've done that in a moment when we look at the next slide but if we consider what this will look like when the program executes it'll look like this and you can see that this is the label and indeed it is in row zero column zero this is what the entry widget will look like and and this here is the button widget with click me to enter name and you can see that the button widget is in row one column zero and if we go back and have a look at the entry widget for a moment you can see that that is in row zero column one 
We should now be able to compare this graphical user interface with the sketch we had made right at the beginning of this video which you can see here. And of course this is the button and we need to attach code to this button now which is what I haven't shown in the program you're looking at on this slide. Now I've taken the previous program and I've made some amendments and the amendment is shown here in the first instance. I've included some code and the code exists in a function and if we have a look at the name of this function it's say underscore hello and if you come down to the button you can see here I've added another option which is command equals say hello. Now this means that this button is now tied to this function meaning that at the time of runtime when you click on the button this code will execute because we've put this option here and this say hello is the name of the function that appears here now the thing is what's inside this function well we have this code and what's that code been based upon well it's been based upon the algorithm we looked at right at the very beginning of this video namely this algorithm here and you can see that step one is get text from entry widget now that is achieved with this line of code here which I'll come back to in a moment this has formed the string and if we have a look at this line it's responsible for forming the string and if we look here it says display the string formed in a label now these three lines are responsible for the implementation of step three of the algorithm and just as an aside remember a step in an algorithm might just have one line but when we go over into code we can see to actually implement this we needed three lines of code as you can see here now when this program executes what we're going to see is the following graphical user interface and you can see it's no different than the one that we saw when we had the program on the last slide of course what we need to realize that now attached to this button we have this code meaning that when I click on this button because of this option here this function will execute so let's have a look at this function and we'll start with the first line and what you can see here I have a variable that's been assigned and here I am using the name of the entry widget and then a full stop and then get followed by the brackets now this is a message to the entry widget that's going to invoke this method within that widget and what this method will do it'll get whatever has been typed into here in the entry widget now we saw a moment ago that I entered in there Philip Jones so let's just say that's just happened so this now will get Philip Jones and Philip Jones will be assigned to this variable so that's what the first line does and that's how we can use the entry widgets to get strings from a graphical user interface let's now consider this line of the function and we can see here we have the string hello which has a space in this position this means concatenate ie join together whatever's stored in this variable and of course this variable has got philip jones stored in it because that's what this line did it put philip jones in this variable which we're using again here so this is going to form hello philip jones and that is then assigned to string to display and we're going to ensure that this string to display will be placed within the graphical user interface now these three lines will be responsible for displaying the contents of the variable string underscore to underscore display and it's achieved by first of all creating an instance of a label which I'm calling label 2 to this label I'm assigning string to display to the text of this label so the label will now contain hello Philip Jones and this line well we can see we're using the grid method to place the label in row 1 column 1 which is here so in this position when we run the program we should say hello Philip Jones being displayed now let's consider the runtime for this graphical user interface and I'm going to type into the text entry box here Philip Jones I will now click on to the click me to enter name button and as soon as I do that you can see that here 
it says hello Philip Jones so the program behaved in the way we would expect and that's simply because when I clicked on the button this here particularly this bit entry underscore one dot get the get was responsible for getting the Philip Jones here and assigning it to this variable and of course the rest of the function was responsible for forming the string and placing the string here in the label that I added to the graphical user interface. I'll now backspace and replace Philip Jones with a different name and the name I'm going to type in this time is going to be Fred Smith and as I type Fred Smith in you can see it appearing in the text entry window. I'll now click onto the button click me to enter name and you can see down here it says hello Fred Smith so this line here the get got hold of this Fred Smith and put it into this variable and of course then we concatenated it with hello and we can see hello Fred Smith appearing here within the graphical user interface now I wasn't 100% happy with the program that I've just demonstrated. I didn't like the way I added the label to the graphical user interface inside this function. But if you have a look at the function now, you can see there is no adding and positioning of the label on the graphical user interface. I've taken it out of this function and I've placed it on these two lines here. If we look at this line, it's creating the instance of the label and this line is positioning the label in row one, column one which means at the moment as we look at the graphical user interface in this position we have label underscore 2 now you can't see it because it happens to have the same background color as the window but you could change it to red when you have a go at writing this program to prove to yourself that it is in that position but you can see I've entered Philip Jones and when I click on this button here what's going to happen this line is going to get that Philip Jones because of this message here this is then going to create the string by concatenating hello with Philip Jones and here you can see that the text attribute of label 2 is assigned string to display and of course string to display is the one just formed which is hello Philip Jones so if I now click on this button you should see in this position where the label exists hello Philip Jones now this program is regarded as the better of the two simply because you build the graphical user interface first and then you attach the code. So here you can see all four widgets are created then all four widgets are placed within the window and here we just alter the attribute of one of the widgets to display hello Philip Jones. As we've seen in a previous video this line of code can be replaced by us setting information to a variable a string variable and I'm going to return to this in the next video so we'll see a different way of getting information out to a label but also I'm going to look at a different way to doing this when we're dealing with an entry widget because you can also associate with an entry widget a variable check out the supporting website for these videos in addition why not follow me on Twitter as I issue a tweet every time I upload a new video